Hey guys, welcome to a STEM stream video. We're gonna cover for you today one of the most important questions to think about as an introductory biology student, and that is where did life on this planet begin? Before there were cells, before there were all of the different organisms that we know today, all the different species, what existed on this planet? Because there had to be something. There had to be something in the very beginning that started it all. And this is a question that scientists are still looking into today because we don't have a definitive answer, but the predominating scientific theory is called chemical evolution, that everything on this planet began with chemicals, a prebiotic soup, a mixture of simple and complex chemicals that eventually arose to cells that eventually became the organisms we know today. This video is going to be a great introduction and summary for you guys, and we're going to cover atoms, chemical bonding, chemical reactions, atomic structure, acid base, simple and complex molecules, and then of course, water and carbon, all of which formed the prebiotic soup that gave rise through chemical reactions and chemical evolution to the life that we know on this planet today. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get started. So if we're going to go by the theory of chemical evolution, we have to ask ourselves, what are the building blocks of chemical evolution. Where did all of that start from? And that involves atoms, ions, and molecules. And there's a very important fact that I want you guys to know, and that 96% of all matter found in organisms on this planet, 96% of what we're made out of, is either hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. That's amazing, isn't it? That 96% of everything on this planet is made out of just those four molecules. So if that's true, then understanding their structure and how they bond with other molecules and how they function as more complex molecules, that is critical to understanding how life began and it's critical to understanding chemical evolution. So let's begin looking at everyone's favorite topic, which is Gen Chem, and we're only gonna go over a little bit in this video. Let's cover the basic atomic structure. And here you see can be any atom with the surrounding electrons on the outside orbiting the nucleus in the middle. Remembering what a nucleus is made out of is important. It's protons and neutrons. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons have a neutral charge, while electrons have a negative charge. Remember that light like charges attract a positive and negative, while opposite charges repel each other. When the number of protons and electrons in an atom are the same, the charges balance each other out and the atom is neutral. Now, the key for these atoms to form more complex molecules is their bonding with other atoms. And the key to bonding is through electrons. The arrangement of electrons around the nucleus is the most important thing to take a look at. Electrons move in regions around the nucleus called orbitals. Each orbital can hold up to two electrons. Orbitals are grouped in levels called electron shells around the nucleus. And the outermost layer of electrons the outermost shell is called its valence electrons, and the valence electrons are the most important to look at for chemical bonding. Atoms are happiest when they are stable, and to do this, they have to fill their valence shell, and one of the best ways to fill the valence shell is through chemical bonding. There are multiple ways that atoms can share electrons with each other, and because of this, it forms different types of bonds that we know that hold atoms together to form molecules. When electrons are shared between two atoms, it forms a covalent bond, which is the sharing of electrons. Now, a covalent bond can be polar or nonpolar, and this means that if one atom has more pull, which is defined as electronegativity, but if it has more pull and if it pulls the electrons more closely towards it, it's going to be considered a polar molecule. But if the atoms share the electrons evenly, it's considered nonpolar. And this is extremely important in the formation of water. We will see later on that the differences in electronegativity between oxygen and hydrogen that creates partial charges of positive and negative on water is what allows life to exist on this planet. Ionic bonds are similar to covalent bonds, but instead of sharing electrons, one atom completely donates its electrons to the other atom, creating a completely positive and completely negative charged atom. An atom or molecule that carries a charge is called an ion, and you're very familiar probably with different ions such as sodium and chloride. These are extremely important in our bloodstream, and they have a very, very big impact physiologically in our bodies. So now that you understand how atoms form bonds with each other to form simple and complex molecules, we can now move on to chemical reactions between these molecules that ignited life on this planet. Before we move on, let's go over a few of the most abundant and important molecules on this planet. Methane, which is the most common molecule found in natural gas, is a carbon and four hydrogens bonded together. You have ammonia, of course water, which is oxygen bonded to two hydrogens, hydrogen gas, nitrogen, oxygen, and of course what we breathe out, carbon dioxide. 
Now, most of the molecules I just mentioned are found in the volcanic gases on volcanoes like Mount St. Helens on Earth and also in nearby planets. Because of this, scientists believe that these were the molecules that were the most abundant and important in Earth's ancient atmosphere and also our earliest oceans. If that's the case, then these are the molecules that served as the building blocks for chemical evolution. But how did these molecules begin to evolve? And the answer is through chemical reactions. The chemical reactions you perform in science lab are fundamentally similar to the chemical reactions that occurred on this planet in ancient times, in the sense that when a chemical reaction is occurring, substances are combined with each other and broken down into other substances. Atoms are rearranged into simple and complex molecules, and bonds between these atoms are either broken or new bonds are formed. Now, if you're wondering where all of these different reactions were occurring, scientists believe that all of these different chemical reactions that sparked chemical evolution occurred in an aqueous environment, most likely being water. So to understand the properties of water, is very, very critical to understanding how life began on this planet. So the water that we drink, the water that we bathe in, the water that we see in the ocean, in the lakes, in the pools all around us, the reason why that this substance is so critical to life and is perhaps the greatest and most important molecule to have ever graced this planet is because its properties as a solvent. Now, why is a solvent so important? What is a solvent? A solvent is a substance that other substances can dissolve into. And the reason why water is so important is that all of the different chemicals that originated on this planet, they had to react with one another for chemical evolution to occur. All of those different reactions that were occurring, they had to happen somewhere. And water was the key. Water was the scientific laboratory that all of the different chemicals could react together in to form all of the different simple and complex molecules that eventually arose to life on this planet. And if that's true, why is water such an incredible molecule? What are the properties of water that make all of this possible? Now remember that the oxygen and hydrogen atoms of water are connected to one another by polar covalent bonds. This gives the oxygen molecule a partial negative charge and the hydrogen molecule a partial positive charge, which allows the hydrogens to undergo what's called hydrogen bonding, meaning that it can bind or bond with other negatively charged ions or molecules. And because oxygen is negative, it can bond with other positive charge molecules. So you have these interactions that occur between water and other substances that are charged, such as ions. And that's what allows so many different chemicals to dissolve in water because most of these chemicals are dissolving through hydrogen bonding. Aside from hydrogen bonding, water's structure also allows it to have many other very, very important and incredible properties. The first is cohesion, and this is a bit of a reiteration of hydrogen bonding, meaning that it allows the molecules to stay together. The second is adhesion, and both cohesion and adhesion are illustrated here. Cohesion is illustrated because the water molecules are cohesive together into one unit of a water droplet, a single water droplet, which is hanging, it's suspended from the root or the stem of this plant through adhesion, meaning that the water is adhesive or it's adhering to a solid surface. Another very important property is surface tension. And what this actually does is it allows very light objects to walk across water surface because water resists any increase in its surface area. And through hydrogen bonding, through that pulling force, it actually has a very high surface tension compared to many other liquids. Now, a very, very important property of water is that it's denser as a liquid than as a solid. Most substances, when you convert from a liquid to a solid, they become denser. But for water, that's not the case. If you look at ice, ice floats. And the reason that ice floats is that because ice as a solid is less dense than as than it is as a liquid. So it floats on top rather than sinking to the bottom. Now, why is this so important to life on Earth? Well, if ice would just sink to the bottom of the ocean, billions of years ago when the oceans were forming, they would have essentially just frozen over and there never would have been the liquid ocean that we know today with ice floating on top of it and they would have been frozen almost before life would have even been able to begin on this planet. So the fact that ice can float allowed for these massive bodies of water to form on Earth like oceans and lakes. And these bodies of water, like we mentioned before, allowed all of the different incredible chemical reactions to form. 
and that allowed life to start and allowed chemical evolution to kick in. We're going to end part one of this video series here and next time in part two we'll pick up where we left off on the properties of water moving forward on into chemical reactions to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for joining us on SEMSTREAM. We'll see you next time.